previous fights. He's been, a, he's been a busy kid. I used to go along with the fighters who've been the most active. Despite a hit and be hit style, though, Emmanuel, uh, Juan Diaz has only scored knockouts in half his fights. Does that mean he's underpowered? Well, I think he's underpowered, and, and I was talking to Ronnie Shields, his trainer, and they explained. For the most part, early, Sim is content to let Diaz do the punching while he does the blocking and looking. Yeah, and he's walking him down steadily, though. Diaz wants to throw 80 to 100 punches per round. Which seems to work very good effectively between Sims' gloves. And hopefully try to bust up his face some. If he can take a good punch, at least try to bust the skin up more. And that's what he's got to watch, that short right hand that Sims shoots when he gets close to him. They trade body shots. Diaz is able to throw more punches. He lands two big ones upstairs. Punch. Well, I think Sims did expect that. Upstairs by Diaz. Love the way he throws the left hook off the jab. Sim landed a little uppercut inside. Diaz punished him to the body with the left hook and gets him twice more. You see how Diaz pops the jab and immediately moves to his left. And he stands long enough to fire a two or three punch combination. He's got to make him count. Sim trying to counter with the right hand every time Diaz stands still. In round one. If Diaz keeps boxing, jabbing, and changing directions, he's got to get to it. Otherwise, it's going to be a nightmare for him going down the stretch. Two solid left hooks by Diaz. Straight right hand. I'm becoming more and more conscious of Diaz's left hand. So Diaz goes down to the body and comes back upstairs. Now Sim landing his own left hook instead inside, but Diaz fires back three times. The body shots are tremendously effective. Uppercut stunned Lock for Sim, and Diaz was able to land a straight right hand across the top. And in this fight, yes he has. <laughs> Take enormous stamina for Diaz to keep that up and fight at that pace for 12 rounds. Yeah, yeah you know, he's still a young man that's in there punching against a young, strong, mature man to stand still and that may give Sim some chance to land counter shots as hard as straight short right hands from Sim in return to use his feet you heard Ronnie Shields say don't be in front of this man keep walking around him and Diaz with tremendous work to the body there both hands and that left hook to the body is being thrown with tremendous conviction Ooh. Difference in hand speed works in Diaz's yeah, favor. He's working very good. And he, one thing I like, he's keeping that left hand up high because as Sims gets close, he has that short, chopping right hand that is extremely dangerous. But Diaz seems to keep his hand up and looking for that punch to come. No, I don't think he's been with this type of a spirited young fighter, neither himself. So this is something new for him. And he's kept virtually from a four-rounder to a 12-rounder, almost. With one fight in between. Different education system. These two guys are trading blistering body shots in this round. Incredible poise, tremendous hand speed. He doubles and triples everything. I mean, he's just winning the fight on hand speed and great combinations. Tired. No, and he's been fighting regular. That's just one thing. I like the activity level. But it's still early in the fight. He's starting to feel combinations from Scott with the left hand. Blocks the left hook from Sim and lands his own left hook cleanly. Another great combination from Diaz, left hook to the body, right cross upstairs. Now Sim lands his right cross. Diaz comes right back to the ribcage. Uppercut from Diaz and another left hook. Sim lands his own uppercut and the left hook inside. This is great stuff. This is power. Every one of these punches are power punches. And at this stage here, the referee has not, to my memory, has had to step in one time to separate them from a clinch. You don't see better rounds than this. These are power punches, they're accurate punches, not slaps. Well, I thought we might have 12 candidates for round of the year. We have his body with that right hand. And now Diaz, for the first time in the fight, is standing toe to toe without ever moving away after punching. And Ronnie Shields, I have a punch. Diaz went a little uppercut crazy there for a minute. That's the right hand that he's got to watch for. Sim has started landing his own uppercut. 
and powerful himself. And of course, Sim is so strong that he's not, a, it's not an accurate reflection of how hard Diaz might punch someday to measure it against this fight. about 10 or 12 seconds without tying Lakfa up. Well, he was a very smart fighter, you know, and once again, he had a brilliant amateur career, you know, just barely missed making the Olympic team because of it being underage. So his foundation is very solid. Diaz having a little energy spurt down the stretch here. Seems to regain some of the initiative as he outlands Sim down the stretch of that. You know, it's one thing for Sims who have fought a boxer somewhere along the way, but when do you fight a boxer who's going to do that? It's unbelievable <laughs> the combinations that he's doing. He's punching straight punches, combinations to the body, to the head. Diaz is doing everything tonight. Oh, he's been rocked. Good uppercut by Diaz. Indeed, Diaz is making that face lumpy, trying to paint a picture which will influence the judges in his favor. Juan Diaz is a product of one of the great trainers of the game, Willie Savannah. And also, Ronnie Shields, and Ronnie Shields, Shields also, who, who also was trained by uh, Willie himself. If Juan Diaz wins tonight, he'll be the 13th to 14th champion with whom Ronnie Shields has been involved oh, as yeah. a trainer. A titleist. Another combination to the body by Juan Diaz. In rounds three and four, Lakva Sim successfully got Juan Diaz to stand still several times and landed shots which placed Diaz's future in the fight momentarily in doubt. It's a rare combination. And the speed and the energy and the desire and the commitment to work hard, rugged as his Mongolian origins would suggest to you, Diaz has been spectacular. With his speed, energy, will, hard punching. seem to be really enjoying himself. You know, as I say, some guys like to bang. He seems to see, enjoy sitting down and just punching down where he could probably box. But I think he feels very comfortable in it with what he's doing. Sims punches were short. Diaz right on the button with the left and the right. The safer he looks, the more he looks like a winner because he's still faster, he's more resourceful, he's landing more punches. Just, just a question of whether his stamina holds up through four or five more rounds of this. That's what I was worried about, Larry, but what I could see, I believe he's going to be okay. And Diaz is like, you know, he's like he was born to be a fighter. He's very Sim, comfortable with everything Sim, he's doing. I think Sim is doing some good work inside here in this round. He may have won this round. This demand that he uses his feet and move to re-establish his dominance in the fight. And beats him to the punch. And his punches are graphic. That is to say, you could see him in the last row of the arena. So... Two extremely willing fighters. Fourth round of this fight is one of the best rounds we've seen in a long time. This is one of the roughest championship fights I've ever saw a young kid have. He's winning the fight big, but this guy's challenging him all the way with short, accurate power punches and relentless. Boy, and he's walked into some. Seemed like he had his mind made up, and he takes a good punch. And his stamina, which has really amazed me for a young fighter. Large number of those. He's landed his jab. He's landed a lot of one-twos with the right cross, and he's done extremely well with the uppercut, as he did right there. 
He's putting together a tremendous amount of punches, and especially when you look at the tight defenders type of guys. This, this is a very unusual opponent right here in the Sims. I, one of the toughest guys I've ever saw, and also a dangerous fighter. Yeah, some of Diaz's opponents are going to seem like a vacation after this kind of rough war against Lock the Sim. In fact, he may go on a knockout streak for his next 10 fights, possibly, after fighting the Sim. You were at law school? <laughs> Life is good. He's an amazing guy, you know. He's going to school, uh, going to school to be a carpenter and training. Uh, Three point at eight average in high school. Good grade point average in government at the University of Houston downtown campus. And Hoping, to go to law school. Yeah. Hoping to be a world championship boxer too. As crowd pleasing a fighter as you'll find in the sport. Other than that, one of the issues, too much ring generalship. Too many great punches, great combinations, tremendous hand speed, good defense. You know, real tight, like Emmanuel said. This kid is tremendous for 20 years old. You heard Ronnie Shields asking Juan Diaz Emmanuel yeah. not to go with the fast punches in the last two rounds, but come out and hit him hard. The, the, the pedigree in him won't let him do it. He, he's going to fight his fight. He enjoys actually the fight now, even when he had to stand toe to toe. He seems to enjoy it. The chance to win a title. There have been a couple of other. Uh, well-known uh, lightweight champions who came from Texas. Joe Brown came oh. from here in Houston. And Lou Jenkins back in the 30s and 40s, a legendary character. Well, I remember Joe good better. Old Bones is his nickname, I think they used to call him. Lou Jenkins was an astonishing puncher before he got himself into the bottle and squandered his talent. 35 seconds to go in the 11th round of what has been a brilliant performance. Stealing the show on a night when two of his main event stable mates, Kermit Cintron and Rocky Juarez, have already gotten the wins against good fighters that their promoters were hoping for. He'll be 21 on September 17. Two months from now, a world title belt. Young Juan Diaz. Yet another big rally. I'll tell you what, I still wouldn't want to have a fight a man's fight this. He just punches too. <laughs> One of the most action-filled three fight cards we've ever programmed on the air. Has had good shoes. He's trying to close the show like a champ. What do I say? When you fight for the championship, you... And let's see how he responds to the swelling chants of the crowd. Right. Those in this community who've been saying ever since age 16, he'd win a world title. When Coming about... in with extreme resolution against a very difficult opponent, Lak Basim of Mongolia. It's been a physical war for 12 full rounds. Oh, oh. Not the same. Ladies and gentlemen, here in Houston, Texas, after 12 great championship rounds, a round of applause for these two lightweights in the ring here tonight. We go to the judges' scorecards. Ray Hawkins scores 118 to 110. Dwayne Ford, 116 to 112. Marcos Torres, 118 to 111. All to the winner by unanimous decision from Houston, Texas. The new WBA lightweight champion of the world, Juan, the baby boy.